And Rosemary is my third wife. And she says, uh, and now Rosemary's mother is like one of the grand matriarchs. Like she's of the church that you go. Yeah, the AUB. Like yeah, yeah, she's yeah. been in polygamy for 50 years at that point, mm. 45 years at that point. She's seen it all. And she says, what you have is, if, if what you say is true, that's so rare. And I go, what are you talking about? That you actually love your plural wife. And I go, oh. You guys remember the TLC series, My Five Wives? It premiered on TLC in 2013, and it documented the life of the polygamous family of patriarch Brady Williams. The Williams family from My Five Wives. Yes, not four. He married five women. As if four wasn't hard enough on Cody Brown. To catch you guys up that haven't seen this show, um, I think they took it off of TLC Go. But basically, this is Brady Williams. What's up, Brady? And to his right here is his first wife, Polly. And then to the right of Polly is Robin. And then on the very far left is his third wife, Rosemary. And then directly to his left is Noni, number four. And then he married Rhonda, which for some reason I think Rhonda might be his favorite as number five. And I feel like this is just kind of (laughs) one of those instances where you kind of see that their religion just kind of pushes you to marry people quickly. He married all five of them very quickly, like all kind of within a few years of each other. Rhonda was last. um, And so he kind of added her a little bit later than the rest of the group. But at the same time, none of the other wives had very much time before he married another one. If you go and you watch kind of like other polygamous content, you see that it's all about uh, marrying people that can give you children. So it's not about cultivating those personal relationships. When you start getting to people that are polygamous like this family, um, the Williams family actually kind of distance themselves from the fundamentalist Mormon religion. And they talk about that in the show. Uh, they distanced themselves because they started realizing that they didn't necessarily believe in a lot of the things that the Mormon church pushed. And he openly says, Brady openly says, they're very patriarchal and they don't really believe in equality. So when you start actually having a husband, well, I think Brady tries to be a good husband, but when he actually starts cultivating relationships and tries to have the emotional depth that all of his wives require, the entire show is kind of about him struggling to do that. Recently, I found it really interesting that the punk rock polygamist spoke out about Cody and Brady attending the same church, and that Brady was actually much more well-known and more liked than Cody. Check out this clip from punk rock polygamist TikTok regarding Brady. We're Cody and Christine celebrities in our church before Sister Wives. Christine was... Everybody knew who Christine was. Uh, Before she got married, she was bubbly, friendly, funny. She was on the youth council, and it was part of her job to plan activities for the young adults. Cody, I mean, not really. I knew who he was. I had seen him before, but I didn't really know him. The one who was more popular was Brady Williams from My Five Wives. He was very popular and very well known. Uh, He was a bishop in that organization. So I was just really taken aback by this interview I saw with Brady in which he spoke about like how and why he ended up leaving the church, leaving the AUB and why some men like Cody get roped into polygamy. He says that sometimes the men and women aren't really interested in each other as individuals. Instead, they're only marrying each other to fulfill the idea of polygamy. You can clearly see that what Brady is talking about in this interview could potentially be exactly what happened with Cody Brown. Early on, I right after I married Rosemary, we were in. I was building my house, and we were in between. We live in 
we rented a room from Rosemary's mom. And we're sitting there having a conversation. And Rosemary's gone. I don't know where she was, but it was, I had the opportunity. It was just me and Rosemary, my mother-in-law, sitting in the living room. And we're talking. And we had a, had a really good relationship. And, uh, and I, I was just going on about Rosemary, uh, how much I loved her, how beautiful she was, what an amazing person she was. And she's just sitting there looking at me. And I, I see her like looking at me like, you know, what's up with you? You know, what are you, what are you trying to angle at? And I, as the face I got, I was like, what? And she's like, you really mean that, don't you? I'm like, yeah. You know, I am just head over heels in love with your daughter. She means everything to me. And Rosemary is my third wife. And she says, uh, and now Rosemary's mother is like one of the grand matriarchs. Like she's, of the church that you go Yeah, the AUB. Like, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. been in polygamy for 50 years at that point, mm. 45 years at that point. She's seen it all. And she says, what you have is, if, if what you say is true, that's so rare. And I go, what are you talking about? That you actually love your plural wife. And I go, oh, this is coming from Donna. You know, and I'm just naive. And I go, no way. Why would anybody marry a woman if they weren't head over heels in love? And she says, there's different reasons. And sadly, I came to find as I matured through into the, God and into the group and became a leader and started having people coming to me with all of their issues. That's absolutely true. I firmly believe that I, if I had to put a number to it, maybe 90 to 95% of, of polygamous marriages are, um, they, they're not marrying because they're head over heels in love. There's that chemistry. There's the, there's like, I would do anything for you, sweetie, you know, and you know, you look at them and your heart skips that type of love, right? They're, they're doing it out of a sense of duty, maybe out of, uh, a power grab kind of or well story. you have to do it to go to heaven right. i mean I, I can't tell you how many times i heard well i have to marry another wife so that i can keep my first wife because the fundamentalist belief is that you know if you don't have your quorum of wives that you'll not exactly. have any of right. them yeah right you'll just be an angel in heaven that's and that's mormon doctrine by the way but uh i just but I never married for that. I'm so grateful that I literally, I mean, I fell head over heels in love with all five. And, and I think that that's been a real key to the success is because I am, dude, I am totally invested in them as a being. And it's almost like I don't have a choice. So I've watched a lot of other interviews and podcasts having to do with Brady and people that surround him. I think that in general, fans and even people like within the AUB fundamentalism, um, they really like Brady. They see him as being someone who does a really good job living out polygamy to the best of his ability. We definitely saw that on the show as well. This interview really left me shook because it's basically Brady, one of the leaders of the church and someone who's come out publicly representing this polygamous lifestyle. He's saying like, I don't think polygamy is going to work for everyone. It's really hard to do, number one. And number two, unfortunately, it's getting pushed on a lot of people within the fundamentalist Mormon system that I adopted. Well, so do you think that more men should be in polygamous relationships or do you feel like, mm. what's your opinion about monogamy versus polygamy and everything? In yeah, I, okay, yeah. I, I think I'm very open that I just think polygamy is so rarely live for the right reasons and, and it's so easy for men to dominate women that it should probably die out. I don't know if it's just me, but I really respect this guy. I would rather see him as the representation of polygamy than Cody Brown any day. I really like that he's able to say, like, look, um, now that I step back and kind of look at how things have worked out with other families and even within our family, you know, I wouldn't recommend this kind of lifestyle to other people. 
No, and I'm I'm a polygamist with a five men, and I think it should. I, I don't I don't think that I mean I think that a man should have the right. I think I think grown adults should have the right to Very to live well, however they want, sure. and nobody should have a say in it. With the caveat that that it's non compulsory, you know, and explain that a little bit. Yeah, I, I know so, what you mean, but yeah, like if a woman, even if it's so one of my favorite things about Brady and this interview is that here he's going to talk about how he's come to realize that there are many women within the AUB who have kind of been pushed into the idea that they must live this lifestyle and that he thinks that's very wrong. And this is one of the issues I see like when I watch the Brown family on Sister Wives. I do feel like it's never really acknowledged that specifically Mary... Christine and I think Robin from what I understand all grew up believing that they were being told and indoctrinated that this was the right lifestyle and the only lifestyle for them to lead so um, you know whereas Cody joined the church later and Janelle also made the choice to join the church and I love Janelle you know I often wonder if Mary and Christine and potentially Robin didn't really feel like they had a choice in whether or not they could live polygamy cultural um compulsion that's still compulsion like they're born and raised to live well if they're never presented with an alternative that's compulsion i really i really think that it's really important for these closed societies to be opened closed polygamous societies and not just polygamous but fundamentalism Okay, for me, Brady had so many more interesting things to say in this interview. He talks a lot about like the way his family works, um, how and why they left the AUB, and what went on with their show behind the scenes. I will link the full interview below. It's rather lengthy. I wanted to share specifically here um, what Brady had to say that I felt directly related to Cody and the Browns, but the interview itself was quite amazing, and I hope you'll check it out. Thanks so much for heading down this rabbit hole with me. I hope to see you again next time. So there was a big, I mean, it was a journey. And, and I've always been one who asks the questions. And, and I'm unafraid of the answer. And there were just some serious questions um, as I keep studying and studying and studying. And, I, and there were the concepts of male superiority within the fundamentalist group and bigotry, racial and gender and um, uh, sexual orientation. All of these things that just couldn't, they just didn't stand up to the glare of my inspection. And I was just like, ugh, you know, but, but I was so deep in. And I mean, I was a leader in this group and I had every one of my wives, they're either their father or their grandfather is an apostle or the prophet. Wow. And so it was, it was a very scary move to me. The challenges, um, well, you got to feed them. And <laughs> what's your, what's your food bill every month? Oh, it's, a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, what's well, the actual food bill is probably close to seventeen hundred. Okay. 16. Yeah. I'm mean, so for me personally. For you personally. Yeah, me personally. Some of the biggest the one of the things that I lay awake at night the most is that I won't have enough time, and so um, because I get it. I mean, there's only one of me. And so I sacrifice a lot of what a normal man might free time and hobby time and friend time. Um, I just don't have that. Like me and you, Jimmy, that's, you know, you get to do what you want. You can travel and, and do the things that you do. And, sure. and that's great. Um, well, I've abandoned the patriarchal structure. To where the man is the head of the home, right? I mean, I still, I still try to. I I am a gifted leader, and so it'd be a pity not to utilize my leadership skills. But I've I've taken that in a different context. Like, we certainly, each one of the wives, ha their vote counts absolutely as much as my vote. Like, 
they trump me all the time. Like, <laughs> nope, we're not doing that. Well, okay, you know. Um, so their voice has to be just as important as my voice, and and that's different than the typical fundamentalist and dare I say even LDS family. Mm -hmm. I mean. We could get real controversial if we wanted to go down. No, that no, no. Road, fair right? enough. I mean, it's, I think anybody listening understands what you, yeah. you know what you're referring to. But, but, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think I try really hard. As my number one thing in life is to be a husband and a father, absolutely, and the provider, and that's just the role that I most identify with, and so I'm most committed to that. And that takes the sacrifice of maybe I'm not as good a friend as I want to be, or, or I don't have hobbies. I mean, I do have I do have things outside of the family. Like I'm going to Africa in April okay. to, with the NGO that I work with, and, and we're trying to get a school going and cashew help relieve some slavery in Africa. 